Hello and welcome back to the bright side of mathematics. Today we have another video where I want to explain how you can learn with my videos. And today I want to talk about the linear algebra series. So here you already see the network on the left and let's click on linear algebra now. And then you see we have the whole course and to be honest we have 65 videos in it. Therefore I would say let's quickly go through it such that you can see which topics we cover here. The first video is just an introduction where I tell you that we will cover vectors, matrices, eigenvalues and so on. But then with the second video we start with a topic but very simple because we start with R2 first. Hence if you already know how to calculate with vectors in the plane you can quickly go through the first videos. Because in the next one we talk about linear combinations and the inner product in R2. This means we will talk about how to measure angles and the length of a vector. And this we can use to finally define lines in the plane. Okay, so until this point this was just an introduction for linear algebra on the simplest level. And in the next video you see we finally start with the vector space Rn. So there we have the general vector calculations with n components and then we are ready to define more objects, more notions in linear algebra. For example in the next one we will define so called linear subspaces. And then I would say part 7 is very important for your learning because there I will describe a very concrete example of such a subspace in Rn. Ok after knowing what a subspace in Rn is we can also define the notion of the span of vectors. This is not so complicated, this is the general thing we use to define subspaces. So we say we have vectors and they span a subspace. Ok and then in the next two videos we will talk about products in Rn. For example here again we have the inner product which measures angles. And then the next product is very special because it only exists in R3. It's the so called cross product or vector product. This one helps you if you want to construct a new perpendicular vector if you already have two and therefore it's very useful in applications. And I would say even more useful is the next object because there we start talking about matrices and we will see we define them because we want to solve so called systems of linear equations. Indeed I would say this is the core element of this linear algebra course. So at the end you should not have any problems solving such an equation with a matrix and a vector. But before we do that I put in some more videos where we talk about matrices. For example here I define some names for some special matrices. This is important because a lot of people just drop the names and then you have to know what we talk about. For example you need to know what an upper triangular matrix is. And now in the next two videos I show you two interpretations of the matrix vector product. The first one is the column picture where we have the columns in mind and the next one is the row pictures where we essentially just look at the rows of the matrix. If you have understood both pictures then it is definitely clear for you why we have this special definition for the matrix product. Indeed there you will see why this matrix multiplication makes sense. Ok so then we can calculate with the matrices and then of course we can also show properties of the matrix product. And after that we can go more abstract and we will talk about so called linear maps. These are maps that conserve the linear structure of the vector spaces left and right. Indeed it's not so complicated at all because in the next two videos we will see that matrices are indeed the exact linear maps we have for the vector space Rn. In other words if you understand matrices you also understand linear maps. Ok and then to get an idea what these linear transformations can do we will look at a lot of examples. And one possibility is to look at linear maps in the plane and then we can visualize them with such a house. So we see what a linear map can do to this house. For example in this thumbnail we just see a matrix here and it represents a rotation with respect to the angle alpha. Ok then after that we go back to the calculation with vectors. So we leave the matrices behind for a little bit 
and we define the notion linear independence. This is really important as a concept because when we want to span a subspace, we don't want to use too many vectors to do that. Therefore, after seeing an example here, we can define the important notion basis for a subspace. This now is indeed the important concept I mentioned. You can span a subspace with vectors and a basis means you have the correct amount. And indeed, a basis helps for calculations because it means you can calculate with the coordinates with respect to a given basis. However, in order to make these calculations correct, we first have to show some things, so we have to prove some theoretical claims. Therefore, this is now a very abstract video, because it's about the Steinitz exchange lemma and the proof of it. And therefore I would say, if you don't understand that at the moment it's not a problem at all, you can just skip the video and continue with part 27, where we talk about the dimension of a subspace. It's a very important concept, but not hard to understand at all, because the dimension just counts the number of elements in a given basis. And now it turns out that this dimension is exactly the object that is conserved under linear maps, in some sense. And this is this video. So this is not hard to understand, but I would say it's one of the most important facts to remember from this course. And then I would say the next videos get easier again, because we go back to the matrices. For example, now we talk about the identity matrix and inverses of a given matrix. In particular, we will see that not every matrix is invertible, and this is an important fact, because we want to solve systems of linear equations. And having an inverse means we have a unique solution. And in order to make this claim more precise, we have to look at the properties injectivity and subjectivity for square matrices. Indeed, we have already learned, square matrices are completely related to linear maps from Rn into Rn. And now maybe a surprising fact is that subjectivity and injectivity mean exactly the same thing in this case. Okay, after these important facts, I want to put in some other topics again. For example, here I want to show that the inverse of a linear map is linear again. So maybe not a big deal for you, but also important to remember. And then we can go back to matrices again. You see the next video is about the transposition for a matrix. It's called the transpose and we will see it's related to the inner product in Rn. So I would say after this point, you know a lot about matrices and therefore we can also define the two important subspaces called range of A and kernel of A. And it turns out that the dimension of them is connected by the important rank nullity theorem. So definitely also something very important to take with you from this analysis course. So please remember this important formula from the video. Okay, and then we can finally start solving our systems of linear equations. So we start here with an introduction and then we can immediately go through the important row operations. Indeed, this immediately leads us how to write down a solution set, so a whole set of solutions, and also it leads us to the so-called Gaussian elimination. In other words, here you learn the calculation steps you need to do to solve a system of linear equations. And indeed, the goal is always the so-called row echelon form. In fact, it's a staircase you want to generate inside your matrix. And you do that because it immediately tells you if a system is solvable or not. And moreover, in the case it's solvable, it also tells you a lot about the uniqueness of the solutions. So I would say, after reaching this part 42, you know how to solve such systems. Therefore, for the next 10 videos, we have a whole new topic, namely, we will talk about the so-called determinant for a square matrix. And I've already said, we have 10 videos, so we will do a lot. First, we start with two dimensions, then we go to the volume measure idea, and then we will reach the Leibniz formula, for example. And by reducing that, we reach a more common formula, which you might already know, it's called the rule of Saru. This one is easy to remember, but it only holds for three times three matrices. So this is indeed important to remember. If you have bigger matrices, you need something else. 
and one possibilities is the so-called Laplace expansion. So if you want to learn just that, this video here is perfect for you because we go through all the steps and have the complete algorithm in the end. Okay, then we close the topic of determinants with some additional content. For example, we have some general formulas, we talk about the Gaussian elimination for calculating determinants, and in the end, we also apply it for linear maps. In fact, this is not completely the end, because the last video about determinants here is about Kramer's rule. But to be honest, this is not the most important part of determinants. Okay, then we are ready for the last section of this linear algebra course, and it will be about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So first, we have to define a lot what we mean here. For example, we need the so-called characteristic polynomial, then we can define multiplicities, first the algebraic one, and then the geometric one. And after that, we already know how to calculate with eigenvalues, and then we can talk about some special formulas, that can give us the spectrum of matrices. However, it turns out, in order to do that in a good way, one has to introduce complex matrices and vectors. So all the notions we had before can be translated into Cn and Cm times n. And therefore, we also have an analog of the transpose, which is the adjoint of a matrix. And then it turns out, that the spectrum of the special matrices we defined before is also very nice. So we have a whole video about that. Okay, and then we have to define what we mean by similar matrices, because it turns out that the spectrum is related for similar matrices. And then finally, I can show you a whole recipe for calculating spectrum and eigenvectors. So if you just want calculation rules and algorithms, this is the most important video for you. After that, we go more into the theory again and talk about the so-called spectral mapping theorem. This one tells us what happens to the spectrum of a matrix when we apply a polynomial to the matrix first. Therefore, this can also help for calculations, but usually it's just a theoretical construct. Okay, then in the last two videos here, you see we will talk about the important topic of diagonalization. So indeed, with the help of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we will see which matrices we can bring into such a diagonal form. And it turns out that the multiplicities of the eigenvalues will tell us if this works. And with that, the series of linear algebra ends, but I would say this is the basic linear algebra course. I also have an advanced one and I call it abstract linear algebra. So if you click on that, you can continue your whole journey through linear algebra and start a new course here. Indeed, there we will repeat a lot of definitions, but now you see we do it in an abstract sense. So we deal with a lot of abstract vector spaces. So for example, we will talk about the so-called basis isomorphism and the relation to the change of basis. So indeed, we will also do some very concrete calculations in this course as well. Okay, so I think that's good enough for an overview of linear algebra here. I really hope you can use my videos and that you have fun with it. And if you have any questions, just use the comments of the videos or the community forum where you can ask me as well. So thank you very much for the support and have a nice day. Bye bye.